Hey guys, it's Dan, your host, Judy Andrew Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for the Walking Dead universe, and in today's video, we're going to be doing an explain video. We're going to be explaining the Walking Dead timeline leading up to the ones who live, and how the Gabriel flashbacks connect to the story. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing another view today, this one's going to be doing another view for The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, and in today's video we're going to be doing another discussion video after episode 5 of The Ones Who Live, and in today's video we're going to be discussing the return of Father Gabriel in episode 5, and how do we explain the multiple time jumps and multiple timelines we saw in this episode. So, we're going to go through it a little bit, we're going to kind of dissect it and kind of go through, at least in my point of view, what I think Gabriel's scenes were supposed to entail, and whether or not um, they connect in the timeline and all that kind of stuff. So in terms of episode five, I've seen a lot of different reactions from you guys. It's been a very up and down episode. I personally loved the episode. It was actually one of my favorites of the season, but I know not everybody enjoyed it. I know some people for some reason uh, thought the episode was messy. Some people said the timeline was messy and I really don't understand that. So we're going to go through it and, and I'm going to explain why I personally feel like this made sense. So this episode we got the return of Father Gabriel. Now, in terms of the scenes that we got, we had the first scene at the episode where we see Gabriel, he's out there in the woods, and he's killing the walkers. Now, in terms of what I remember seeing from Gabriel, it does appear like he has a hood on top of his head, and it looks like he is in, you know, uh, you know, been looking for a long time, and he looks like he's, you know, kind of distraught and stuff like that, and he sees a helicopter, and he prays to the Lord and stuff like that, and it's a really intense scene. Now, one of the things that people may not have noticed about this scene is that he's wearing the same poncho and same jacket that Jadis had in the episode. The same one. And it's literally lined up the same way. You've got the hood on top of Gabriel's head and he's sitting there um, looking up at the helicopter and he's, you know, absolutely floored, right? So the way I look at this is, at least me personally, is that it almost feels like this scene is taking place in the future, you know, when he's looking for Jadis and he's looking for her because she hasn't arrived at that time. I understand that some people say that it's a flashback because he has the goatee and it's the full goatee, but the way I look at it is that the scene is very disjointed from the other scenes that we see. I personally look at that scene as a scene in the current timeline where he's looking for Jadis, he's trying to figure out where she is, he sees the helicopter, and he's praying to God that she's not dead, you know, even though he, he probably knows that she is at this point, you know. I feel like that scene, he already already has knowledge that she's dead, or at least is hoping she's not, you know. That scene, to me, feels like a scene where we're going to find out exactly what happened to Jadis, and it's going to be a scene where now he's trying to figure out how it happened to her, and it's going to be one of those type of scenarios. I look at that scene as in the current timeline. I know not everybody does, but that's how I personally look at that scene. And then you get the flashbacks, right? You get Gabriel that, of course, is meeting with her every single year. Which, again, I know people have said that there are many, many plot holes in this because, you know, a lot of people say that the episode doesn't make sense in the timeline and stuff like that. But here's the thing. They never explain in the timeline exactly what year that takes place. All we know is that Gabriel, around this time, when they did the three years, you know, beforehand in the episode, that was during the six-year time skip where Rick was taken away. And then they skipped another year, and that lined up to when Michonne left and was looking for Rick. Then we skipped another year, which would be around the time that The Walking Dead ended, or maybe a little bit before, and, you know, Gabriel is about to get executed by Jadis, and then, of course, um, you get the end of the original Walking Dead, and Gabriel's still alive, and, you know, he's still kicking, of course, and there you go, you know. So I don't understand what is so difficult about the timeline. I really don't. I know a lot of people are complaining about the timeline, but here's the thing. It's very easy. Rick's been locked up for eight years, right? They said that because RJ is almost eight years old, right? So it's been almost eight years that Rick's been locked up. Now you take that and you go back three years, right? That would add up to, of course, a little bit before 906, right? the first time Gabriel met up with Jadis. And then you would skip another year. Gabriel mentions to Jadis that Michonne left, right, in 1013 to go, you know, help some people. That's the second one. 
Then the third one, when she uh, aims the gun towards Gabriel, that is around the time of 1124 or after 1124 in between that year time skip that they had at the end of the series. Either it's it's after, before, doesn't matter. It's around that time, you know? So I'm not understanding what the plot holes are. And I'm, I'm making this video because I don't understand what people are saying about the plot holes. I, I really don't. Um, you know, they, they had Rick in there for eight years, you know, three years before. That would add up to a little bit before 906. That's the first time Gabriel saw Jadis. Then the second one is after Michonne left in 1013 to go, you know, help some people, but really she was looking for Rick. Then we skipped a year, right, because Michonne was in that mall, and she told Rick that, you know, that, you know, tear gas or whatever, that took a good year away from her, right? That mustard gas, it took a whole, you know, year away from her. Then you line up to the third time, which is a year later, that's when Michonne would end up finding Rick, and that's the time that Jadis pointed the gun towards Gabriel, right? So... Then, of course, you line things up, and then Michonne and Rick are out there now. So, there's a little bit of time that's still remaining before Gabriel would find them, and I'm assuming we'll get another little time skip after this finale, and that'll line up to where Gabriel is now, which, like I said, I think that currently, Gabriel is doing this, which is looking for Jadis, and that's what that opening scene was, because you notice that they didn't tie up that opening scene, they didn't tie up loose ends, they didn't do anything like that, and keep in mind, Gabriel never saw anything to do with, you know, Jadis or anything like that until that first scene where he meets up with her. I guarantee him seeing that helicopter is after he either knows that she's dead or or it's something like that. Because, look, I recognize that he has the full goatee again, but he could have easily grown that out as he's out there for a little while looking for her. I guarantee that's what that opening scene is. And he's going to meet up with Rick and Michonne at one point or another. Whether it's in season two, or it is in the finale at some point, I guarantee that's how they're going to do it. And, you know, again, I'm not understanding what people are saying by the plot holes. I think the timeline is very clear, to be honest. I think they make it make a lot of sense, especially when, again, the first time they meet each other is the first time. And then the second time they mention that Michonne left, you skip a year, right? Michonne was in the mall, of course, you know, uh, recovering. You skip a year, then you get the third time where Jadis, you know, points the gun towards him. And then you get, uh, you know, the current timeline. It's it's very simple. To me, it's very, very simple. Um, it's, you know, makes a lot of sense, really. But, you know, that's just me. Post your comments down below. How do you feel about the timeline? Do you think it makes sense? I personally do. I don't understand the, the criticism people have been giving it. But I really want to make this video to defend it. I really wanted to make this video to try to help people understand exactly what's going on. That's the best way I can explain it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So anyway, if you knew the channel and you enjoy videos like this, make sure to click to subscribe. Don't miss any of the videos of the Walking Dead universe. Make sure to follow me at Dan's The Walking Dead Views on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for more videos of the Walking Dead franchise. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And peace out.